Welcome, welcome, welcome to a fun little Tuesday edition of self-publishing interviews. And I'm pretty fortunate to actually have my most interviewed guest ever. I, that's gotta say something to our relationship, uh, James <laughs> Ranson. And uh, James is, is a book coach, an experienced editor, as well as a ghost writer. Dude, what haven't you done? Have you done covers? If you tell me you do cover design, no, I'm gonna lose my mind. No, I don't do covers. I, I, <laughs> okay. I am not the aesthetic person. Like, I could not design a cover for you if I tried. <laughs> so That's, no, I don't do that. <laughs> you, you and me both. I, I can, I've got a tenuous grasp on it, uh, but for the most part, uh, I, I need to stick what I know best, and that's doing videos and writing books. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit out of the norm. Uh, I just kind of, I let everybody know yesterday that you and I were gonna be having a little bit of a chat today. And yeah. I said, you know, what the heck, let's get on in here because I, I would love to just ask you some questions. And technically, hey. this is an AMA. It's an ask me anything. And so folks, if you've got questions, ask James. Make sure you're gearing it towards James. Uh, I'm not taking any questions myself. I will go ahead and field those. But let's just go ahead and start things out, James. Yep. Uh, for those of the people that aren't familiar with you, give me kind of a synopsis. Who's James Ranson and what brings you to the dance today? I am the master wordsmith. That is the, the tagline of my business. Uh, it's where you are as, you're as good as your word. I help you make your words as good as you. And um, so I have been an editor, I've been a ghostwriter. I am currently focusing on being a book coach and consultant. And what that basically means is I help business owners and entrepreneurs take what they do really, really well and turn that into a book that represents what they do as well as they do it to the people that they want to hire, that they want to train, that they want to speak for. That's really cool, man. Um... There's good reason why folks that I lean on this guy quite a bit because he's got a no BS tactic to, you know, telling you what's on his mind. Like, is your filter broke, by the way? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I keep I keep reinstalling it and just like loading, loading. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's broken. So if you guys ever want like a uh, somebody who's gonna tell you like it is, uh, I tell you, James is, is one of the good people, and there's good reason why. When I wanted to put together a course for editing something that would just at least be a good overview of editing, I reached out to you and you were kind enough to volunteer your time to put together Editing 101. Can you tell me a little bit about that specific course? And of course, hey, I'll tell everybody how to get it. <laughs> yeah, sure. So so as you guys all know, Dale has a an ever-growing uh, like writing and self-publishing course. I feel like it's it's very uh, very Frankenstein-esque. Where every time I look at it, he's added something. Uh, and there's like a new there's like a new a new uh, a new arm over here, or a new like like a second head over there, or something like that. But basically, you know, <laughs> if you're gonna if you're if you're gonna learn like uh, the the overview and the basics of of self-publishing, that's a really great resource for that. But what so what what Dale asked me to do was to come in and share some of my perspective on how you want to edit a book uh, to make sure that it, that it turns out really, really well. And so I think I did, what I do, like seven videos? I think I did seven videos yeah. for that. So, so I know we talked about how to do some of your own revising and self-editing. Mm -hmm. We talked about what it takes to find a good editor and you know where to look and where not to. Yeah. And we talked about you know how, does, how, does, how do you actually work with the editor once you find them? And I did a whole, and I think the last video was all about like how does time and money play into it because you know they're always going to play into it, and 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 things like that. And you know I'd have to go back and look at like to figure out ex remember exactly what I put in. But I remember it was really fun, and I remember I had a great time just sort of talking about you know a lot of the different things that I've learned in five years and change of doing this. So yeah. I was grateful for that chance to to help out a friend and to to add another another wing to the. The, um, the the building that you're putting together over there. And yeah, feel free to go check it out. Well, this this is gonna be news to James um, uh -oh. and it's gonna be news to everybody <laughs> else, folks. Uh, and I promise I'm not sitting here trying to shill what, you know, my stuff and such, but I do wanna kind of encourage anybody that has been on the fence about getting the DIY publishing course. The premium monthly has James's course, but starting on June 1st, all iterations of the monthly program will have editing 101 because to me 
I think oh, nice. that this is one of the best overviews when it comes to editing, and I think that every oh, self-publisher needs to equip them with that. So, um, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know that James was straight up. You, you can disagree with me on this one. James <laughs> is not financially benefiting from from this at all. He was like, no, no, no I'm just gonna do. Yeah, and I offered, did I? <laughs> you, you did, you did. I did, and, so. And you did offer, and I honestly, I, one of the things that I believe, like as strongly as I believe anything, is that if you are going to write a book for any reason, you must make sure that book is well edited. And I am willing to put that message out in the world through somebody I respect as much as Dale without having to earn anything in order to do it, so. Yeah, and it's, it's stellar, it's really good. So folks, Thank if you. you've been on Thank the fence, you. June 1st, it will be available through all the monthly uh, options. You are the first to hear this. Everybody that's watching this is the first to hear this. So uh, let's kind of put the DIY publishing course off the side because I want to focus a little bit on you. And uh, folks, if you've got questions for James about editing and some of his experience in the self-publishing industry, as well as you've worked with Trade Publish as well, right? Uh, I've worked with companies that do publishing. I haven't worked with like a traditional publisher. I okay. have like like the New York Big Five or anything. I haven't worked with any of them. Okay, but, so uh, like the smaller publishing houses then. So I've worked with so companies like Thanet House Books, who do they do Russell Brunson's books. Okay, yeah. Um, I've worked with them. I've worked with uh, with Bright Flame Books and My Word Publishing and and companies like that that work with indie authors specifically. To, to help them get good books into the world. I've also, I mean, I've worked with self-publishing school. I don't really brag about that, but <laughs> I've, I've, I've worked with them. I've worked with Scribe Media. And oh, fun fact, Dale, you'll appreciate this. Okay. I just got brought on as a writing coach and content editor for book launchers with Julie. Dude, yeah, nice. So I'm, I'm starting to do some work with her, which I'm, I'm super excited about. So, so uh, if y'all don't know, Julie Broad, who runs uh, booklaunchers.com, is a mutual friend of Dale and, my, and me. Mm -hmm. Love Julie Broad. I got to know her because of you, Dale, and she's also someone in this industry that I just have such respect for. Yes. She takes the same kind of quality-centric approach to self-publishing and writing books that I do and that Dale does. So, like that, the fact that I'm now going to be able to do a bunch of coaching work and 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 editing work with her company, I'm really excited about that too. So, yeah, Book so Launchers is, is second to none, and uh, Julie is just a phenomenal person. Uh, you know, you look up integrity, you'll see her picture right next to that word right there. Uh, yeah. Julie's just fantastic. So glad to hear that, man. Actually, there's there's firsts across the board here. So I know, right? I, just, I realized, like, because we literally just set that up, and I was like, oh yeah, I should probably tell Dale. <laughs> That's so, really really cool yeah, to hear. Really, really, uh, I've got nothing I, but I have like my first two or three clients with her just starting up now. So nice. Well, big kudos. Those guys are are in for a real treat. So um. I'm gonna ask you just a couple questions before we field Go anything here into the chat. And if anybody's watching this on the replay, obviously drop any kind of questions and James and I will kind of troll about inside the uh, comments and see if we can kind of answer those. Totally. Um, so in any event, I got a question for you. Uh, I know a little bit of your backstory, but I've never really asked some burning questions. And it's just, I think that we always ran out of time. Um, tell me about you being a ghostwriter. Run out of time. Hey, yeah, yeah, we almost always did, but uh, hopefully we don't run out of time today. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience as a ghostwriter. I noticed one of the things, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it says that you're a New York Times best-selling author, uh, ghostwriter, excuse me. Um, how did that happen, and am I right in quoting that? Not quite. Uh, I'll, okay. So I, I, am a, I am a Wall Street Journal best-selling editor. Uh, I've worked on a Wall Street Journal best-selling book. So Wall Street Journal and New York Times are typically like the two big lists that you want to aim for if you're going to go for like the, the really, really big stuff. Um, I When I worked with Scribe Media, which back when they were booking a box a couple of years ago, uh, I worked on a book called Connect by a gentleman named Josh Turner. It's all about uh, LinkedIn and how to use it really well and stuff like that. And that book became a Wall Street Journal bestseller. So that's... that's wow sort of my, my, my claim to fame in that regard, I guess. Um, <laughs> but so there's a couple of ways that I can answer this question. I can, I can certainly speak to just ghostwriting experience in general, but since you're ta you're asking about the, the, the big list, I will, I will speak to that for a second as well. Honestly, mm -hmm. the, the best way to get a book to that level of list is to have a ginormous following. Like if you have, and we're not, and I'm not even talking Dale L. Roberts ginormous. I'm talking like 
Um, a hundred Dale L. Roberts is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. So, so um, what's a good example here? Actually, hold on. So, this is James Clear, uh, his most recent book, Atomic Habits, and I actually got it before it became a New York Times bestseller, which is why it doesn't say New York Times bestseller on it. James Clear has a blog with, I want to say, he gets half a million hits a month or something like that. Oh. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. So, um, and then actually, also, sorry, over here, I have, this is one, uh, this is Todd Herman's new book, The Alter Ego Effect. I've just now started reading it, and it's excellent. Um, Todd Herman also has a huge, huge, huge following. He has, you know, millions of people following him. If you have that kind of following, you can leverage that following to sell tens of thousands of books in actual bookstores within a few weeks and get yourself onto the New York Times or Wall Street Journal bestseller list. If you don't have that kind of following, honestly, there are much better uses of your time and your effort to market a book. Because you can have a book that's very successful for you and especially for your business without it ever actually being a best-selling book, certainly not on the New York Times or Wall Street Journal level and honestly not even on the Amazon level. And that's going to set off a rant on Amazon that'll, that will definitely make us run out of time. But um, <laughs> point being, you know, if you want to have a successful book, there are things you can do with that book. Number one, make it really, really amazing. Number two, make sure it's really connected to the audience that you serve. And number three, don't give up on it after the first you know, couple weeks or couple months or whatever. You make sure that marketing the book is a long-term effort that you put into it. Doing those things and then having a strategy to do those things to help grow your business or your, or your author business over that time will get you as much or more book success where you are than trying to get to a bestseller title that you either might not be a good fit for you to begin with or just you might not have the following to try for. Yeah, yeah, I love how you're you're very realistic because I know I had brought up you know trying to do the Wall Street Journal bestseller list on an upcoming publication, and you looked at me like I had two heads, and you're like, <laughs> "Good luck." <laughs> I mean, yeah, and 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 like you know, I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> as you said earlier, I, I I do kind of have a no BS approach to this. Like yeah. I I have, I, I'll, look, I care about indie authors, and I care about the people that I work with. And I want to make sure that they have the best book experience that they can, both in terms of writing the book, which I can help them with, and then using the book, which they're more on their own about. And so I, if I'm going to, if I tell you, yeah, you know, sure, you can become a New York Times bestseller, just do this, this, and that, that's not serving you. And frankly, that's not honest. Yeah. And I'm never going to do that. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you're, you're no BS and not trying to be uh, selling us uh, snake oils and such. So that, that's, no. it's always good that you keep it real and, and such. Uh, dang it, half a million hits. I'm lucky if I get 30,000 hits on my website. <laughs> I got a ways to go, man. <laughs> that's, and that's fine. I mean, you know, dude, because you're, you're not, you're also focusing in different areas. You yeah. know, James Clear doesn't do video. That's not his thing. And, Take that, uh, James Clear. I don't yeah. even know who you are. Sorry, dude. Sorry. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. Um, but you know, he he um, he writes specifically about habits and and you know changing your life mm. through the power of habits. And that's you know that's a really cool topic. A lot of people are into that. You know, you have a much different topic. James Clear doesn't write about self publishing. I mean, that's that's not his thing. Self publishing is your thing, and to a degree, my thing, and that's okay. You yeah. know, and and honestly, that brings up a different point. You know, whatever it is that you're gonna you're gonna want to write a book about is going to be your thing. One of the big mistakes that I can see many authors who just want to have easy book success is they think they have to write a book about something that's already successful or something that has a bunch of, you know, keywords on Amazon but that isn't something they themselves know or care about. That's it's great so to have it's great to have a book in a niche that does really well on Amazon if that's a goal of yours. But if it's a book that 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 you're not you know, that you either don't know much about the topic and you're just kind of jumping on a bandwagon because someone else famous did it, or it's not a topic that you care about, that you actually are going to put some of yourself into, then you know that's not going to be a successful book. This is so true, man. This is why I love talking to you. Uh, all right, so I'm going to shift a little bit. Go for it. Because this guy knows some strategies. Don't let him fool you. He's not just a guy with a red pin. 
Uh, he actually released this past year, Don't Write a Crappy Book. You guys have seen this hanging out in the background. I even gave away a gift copy at the recent um, meetup that we had here in Columbus. I'm not sure who won that, by the way. Um, but in any event, uh, in this book, thank you, uh, there, he interviewed a number of people within the publishing industry, and I was very fortunate. It always threw me off whenever I heard a quote because I was listening to the audiobook version of this, and I hear a quote, and I'm like, that's an awesome quote. And we like, Dale L. Roberts. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, um, you said some pretty good stuff. And you, I mean, no, you, I, I interviewed 27 people, including I had someone interview me uh, for that. And, and Dale, you had some very, very strong quotes among those people. So you, you deserve every feature you had in there. Well, thank you, thank you. I, I, it was, it was, it was awesome. It's a good book, by the way, folks. Definitely grab yourself a copy. Uh, great read. Um, it, and the funny thing is, is if you type up "crappy book" on Amazon, James comes up to the top. <laughs> was this purposeful, man? Um, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I I wanted to have a title that kind of grabbed people by the collar a little bit. Yeah. And uh, and I, I think I, I think I succeeded in that. <laughs> you, you definitely did, and I just I love the the trash can on it. Uh, but uh, the reason why I'm bringing up "Don't Write a Crappy Book." Uh, is, you know, not the fact that you've got a, 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 you curated the best of the best within the industry and that you painstakingly went through and crafted a very well written book and well put together book, but it's, it was your post launch, or actually kind of your pre launch into your post launch strategy, your reviews, dude, you are straight up insane. Tell the people what your plan was and how did it pan out? Okay, so first of all, I, I need to be clear that my, my book launch plan, such as it was, was not to become an Amazon bestseller in any shape, way, shape, or form. Again, cue the rant we talked about earlier. Right, um, right. But I, my goal was to get as many reviews as I could. And the, the reason that I did that is that being a bestseller on Amazon honestly means very little these days, unless you happen to be like one of the top 100 or 200 in the entire store. Um, because, you know, below that level, it's, you know, it starts to get to a point where like, well, did you sell a thousand books? Did you sell a hundred books? Did you sell 10 books in, in the right category at the right time? There's a lot of just hacks and gimmicks that can go into it. And, you know, Dale, you have a lot of great videos elsewhere about how to do some of these things with integrity. And I love that. That's one of the reasons I respect you so much. And at the same time, you know, you have you've said at one point that, you know, you you believe that Amazon wants you wants you as in the author to win. I kind of disagree with that. I think Amazon wants you to keep playing. Uh, I think Amazon is a little bit like the casino where, you know, the house always wins no matter what, no matter what individual person who comes through win or lose, the house always wins. I think that's what Amazon does. So as far as a, uh, a sales goal or a bestseller label goal, I wasn't going for any of that. However, having reviews is one of the best marks of credibility that you can have for a book especially if you are able to do that within, you know, within the first couple months of, of it coming out, because that shows like, you know, people are reading the book and they have things, they have things to say about it. They may not even always have great things to say about it, but they have things to say about it, which means they read it, which means it's worth reading. Um, that's essentially how that logic works. So my plan was to get as many reviews as I could. Uh, my, my goal was to get 100, and full disclosure, I did not meet that goal. Um, I got slightly over halfway to that goal. Uh, I think in grand total at this point, I have 54 reviews across four countries, which I'm, I'm very happy with that. Yeah. Uh, what I essentially did, uh, I did a, a, a small scale reach out to everyone I know type of campaign, but I wanna be clear, this was not reaching out to everyone I know in every capacity. This is right. people I'm reaching out to that I know in a professional capacity. So mm -hmm. people who are business owners and are entrepreneurs who would be in my audience. So I did not ask my mom for a review. I did not ask my sister for a review. I did not ask my best friend for a review, um, that kind of thing. Because one, that's kind of cheating. And two, yeah. the way that Amazon is set up, and Dale, I know you can explain this way better than me, but I'm gonna, gonna give it a shot. Okay. Um, <laughs> The way that Amazon is set up is that it shows your book 
to people based on the people who have already looked at it. So if my mom were to look at my book and leave a review, Amazon is going to be like, okay, so James Ransom's mom has looked at these other things on Amazon because of who she is and what she does. So we're going to show don't write a crappy book to people who are looking at those things. But my mom is not a business owner. She's not an entrepreneur. She's not an author. She's never going to write a book. So if, you know, if people, you know, if Amazon starts showing don't write a crappy book to people like my mom, they're going to be really confused and they're not going to look at it. They're not going to read it. They're not going to buy it. And they're not going to leave a review. So I did not reach out to my mom <laughs> or, or my fiance or, you know, my best friend or any people that are just like would gladly do something like this out of the goodness of their heart because they love me, but are not the people in the audience I want to reach. But I did reach out to um, a good couple hundred people, maybe two to 300 people, I think, who right. I know in a professional professional capacity. And I put some emails together basically saying, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'd like your help with. Here is a free copy of the book. Here's a PDF copy of the book. You know, you can read all of it if you want, or you can read the first three chapters if you want. Uh, please you know, leave a review um, after I launch the book. And then, and, and I got everybody's permission to put them onto an email list so I could send them more review information and I think in the week sort of leading up to the launch date, I sent a few other emails out saying, okay, so this is coming up. Here's what to be prepared for. Here's what you want to do when you write a review. Here's what not to do uh, if you don't want to piss off Amazon, things like that. And that actually seemed to go over pretty well. People seem to appreciate that. Um, it was good because you did, didn't, it wasn't like you were coercing anybody into a review. Because I remember getting those emails. It wasn't like, you were like, you have to write something positive, all right? Like, it, it was totally no. so. Yeah. And that's and that's a really good point. Like, yeah. I don't, like, do I want all five-star reviews? Sure. But, I mean, I didn't get them. I got, I mean, I got some four and threes. And those are fine. Like, I yes. want people, I wanted people to be honest. And honestly, if, and there are some people who read the book who had issues with it, who are like, you know, there's this thing that you this thing that you started the book with I didn't like and I'm like okay fair enough um, thank you for your review and you know and that's I the, the goal of getting reviews is to is to get honest feedback from as many people as possible because honest feedback shows that they've read the book and yes. or at least part of the book and they're not just doing you a favor and let's be honest uh, I mean you're gonna look at some of the other authors out there well-established ones even through trade published deals um, they never have just all fours and five stars. Uh, I see no. so many times that indie authors just get like that, that you know, sucker punch to the gut where they were just like, I just got a one or two star review. Yeah, you're not gonna make everybody happy. <laughs> That's the important thing is if you start to see those lower reviews, it is a well-rounded view of, of what you are providing. So I think it was really awesome, that massive action that you took and getting that the emails out there. And the emails are really, really well done. Um, obviously, I followed them. And you continue to send out emails too as well because I, I know I'm still part of your list. Um, mm -hmm. Highly recommend you guys get the opportunity. Get on his email list. It's really good. He's yeah. giving you some excellent information. And, um, and uh, as, a, as a preview of coming attractions, I am going to be doing a lot more content out to that list later this year. Nice, so, nice. FYI. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's that's really good. Uh, I've been kind of keeping an eye here on chat. Some people have been kind of poking on in there. They've laughed at a few cool. of our jokes. Hey, Julie is awesome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, anybody has any kind of review, uh, or any kind of reviews, excuse me. Anybody that has <laughs> any kind of questions, please drop them on in there. Amber says, it's good that James isn't Mary Poppins. He's not going to give us a spoonful of sugar. He's just going to give, going to serve the medicine as is. That's okay, because... I like how bourbon burns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. 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 Feel the burn. No. And and so so this is interesting because one of the things that actually a number of friends and and clients of mine have commented on is that I have a lot of empathy for them and I have a lot of empathy yeah. for the situation that they are in as someone who has you know they have a successful business but they have no idea how to write a book that represents that business well and and so in that sense like I can be. I can be very, very empathetic and very welcoming, very kind and other things like, and I like to be like, I, I don't like to be a hard ass. <laughs> it's not my goal in life is to be, you know, a, a, a giant, you know, tool over here. But at the same time, I, I am not going to tell you something that I think you want to hear if it's not going to help you. Yeah. And, and I think uh... that's the difference between, or the difference that I try to, to put in place between me 
and and some other people in the industry that I will not name specifically because of of law uh, legal things. But right, I, that right. I don't you don't want to get into <laughs> to huge trouble. Uh, Mojo says if they aren't trolling, a one star review is useful to me. Let's lets me know what to work on. So that's, yeah. That's oh, that's point. a great thought. So so actually, and, and Mojo, that's a great 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 point because if you are thinking about writing a book. Uh, you know, on a particular topic and you go and look at other books on that topic, one of the best things you can do is go and look at the lower level reviews that that book got, if any. And because that'll tell you what did they miss? Like, what are they, you know, what could they have done better? What did they not address that maybe they should have? So when you go to write the book on that topic, you can make sure that you answer those questions and you fill in those gaps. So that people who find your book be like, oh, so you are doing something completely unique from what this other person did, even though your topics are the same. Yeah, good, good tip, man. He's dropping some serious 411 here, folks. Um, oh, uh, Thomas Bradley says, if you have to depend solely on reviews from friends and family, you're not going to make it anyway. Um, I'm going to go mm-hmm. ahead and pick up this one because you covered it. By the go way, for it. Uh, you, you nailed it. Um, <laughs> you can think of it from a standpoint of having the biased reviews, um, you know, because there's the one end. I used to encourage people, if, if you're starting out, go with fa- family and friends. I no longer stand by that. It's better to grind it out and get organic reviews from people that truly care about your publication. And the, the reason is, first of all, Amazon doesn't like biased reviews. And even if you're not publishing on Amazon, no one likes biased reviews, period. Uh, you know, they don't want to see like, oh, I'm so proud of my son. He put out the greatest book. Like, no, I, I stopped asking mom. My, by the way, mom, I always loved the first reviews. It was, it was awesome that you did that. Um, but, you know, anymore, that's, that's the thing is there is, if you start mixing those things uh, together. So let's just say, for instance, my mother enjoys, which I'm not saying she does. Uh, Sorry, mom, I'm not throwing you on the bus on this one. Let's say that my mother enjoys reading romance novels and then she picks up a fitness book and she puts a a, 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 five star review on it or whatever. It's going to start to mix my content with the other romance and like and the romance people are going to see this. And here's the problem as it's being served up to the audience and they're not first of all, clicking on the also bots and taking advantage of it. Amazon's going to immediately start to think the algorithm is going to go, oh, well, this isn't relevant and it'll start to suppress that specific listing. So it is better, kind of like what James was saying, reaching out to people within, like say for instance, with his being a nonfiction industry, within his industry, within somewhere that it's gonna serve a purpose. So if you're a romance writer, it would behoove you to get in touch with romance readers so that way they are going to be putting in authentic, real reviews and you're not getting mixed up with the wrong lot. Yeah. So actually, um, I did one other thing I did around the the launch of my book is I did a blog tour uh, that a, a contact of mine set up, and that was interesting because it was one of the th- aspects of my book launch that kind of fell on its face because of what you were just talking about. A lot of the blogs, for whatever reason, that were willing to feature my book, are not blogs that my audience reads. So. You know, it was nice to have a couple of features, you know, a couple of people ask some questions. I don't think anyone actually bought the book or, or and I know and nobody reviewed the book because of that. So I was like, well, that was an audience mismatch and that's a good lesson to learn. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, just out of curiosity, before we do shift gears, um, how did you get in touch with doing like a blog tour? How did that work? Obviously, it didn't uh, work in a, your favor. And how would you have done it different? A mine had done one okay. and it had worked decently well for her and uh she just put me in touch with the person who who had done them for her and i at that point i was like all right i'm gonna give this a try because i'm giving a number of things a try i'm experimenting in a few different areas and you know i i it cost me a few hundred dollars which was more than i it got me in return so i'm not going to be doing it again at least not in that way but you know it was a it was a good lesson it was a good thing to learn from Nice, nice. Uh, I'm glad you shared this. So I'm going to shift a little bit of a um, into something completely different here, and Go for it. actually, it's still related to you. Obviously, about a month and a half ago, two months ago, you'd reached out to me, and I called you certifiably insane because you are normally a one-on-one book coach. You're typically yeah. working with them one-on-one, and it's at a pretty high ticket uh, of value. But right now, you're looking to branch out into something completely new. 
share with us what that is and what your intent is and how can people get more information about it? Yeah, absolutely. So I am in process of putting together my very first group book coaching program. And that is, it is taking all of what I have learned in, in five years of editing, ghostwriting and coaching and essentially putting it all together in a, into a group setting for the first time. So you will, if you decide to be part of this course, uh, this part of this program, you will work with a, a cohort of up to 12, no more than 12 authors who spend five months getting personal guidance from me in this group setting, you will learn what kind of book strategy do you need to have for a successful business book. You will learn all of the why questions you need to ask. Why are you writing this book for yourself? Why does this book need to exist? Why is this book going to help your business? Why does your reader actually need it? All of these things that, that you need to, to, to figure out before you ever put pen to paper or you know hand to keyboard. You will learn how to outline a book really, really closely and really, really deeply. And you will spend more time outlining than you probably think you have to. And but you will be grateful that you spent that time once you actually start writing the first draft. Because the, the more detailed of an outline you have, the easier the writing becomes. You will also get feedback on that first draft, both from me and from the other people in the group. So you will get some peer feedback of people who maybe they're not exactly in your industry, but they are indie authors and business owners like you. So you will get some perspective from them on, you know, what is working about your about your book draft and what maybe needs some work. And the last thing you will do, which I think is one of the biggest things that sets us apart from many other programs is you will spend about as much time rewriting the book as you spent writing the first draft in the first place. And you'll have as much guidance from me at doing the rewriting as you will during the writing. One thing I've noticed in a lot of uh, sort of DIY publishing programs is that they tend to rush people through the first draft and then throw them into you know whatever editing they recommend, if they recommend any, and then <laughs> charge them all the way through to, to getting the book published. And they don't ever really talk about beyond a little bit of self-editing, like they all say, oh, you should read the book out loud, which you probably should, but there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. Um, uh, they don't really go into the rewriting side of it. And, and honestly, if there is one thing that every book I have ever worked on has in common, it is that it needed to be rewritten at least once from first draft to final draft, if not multiple times, in order to get it to a successful level. So I wanted to make a point of including that in the program. So what you will have when you finish the program is essentially your final draft. And you will you'll need to get it proofread because by that point you know we'll both be so close to it we'll probably miss some typos but other than that you'll be ready to you know get it proofread get it designed and get it up you know get it published and start using it in your business this is awesome uh really quite a comprehensive program man five months uh very very awesome uh so folks i did just dropped in the link to all the information that you're gonna need about the Apprentice Author Program, uh, hosted by James Ranson, the professional book coach, good friend of mine here. Uh, and also, if you happen to be watching this on the replay and you just want to be able to type it out really quick, you can go to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash AAP. Again, that's selfpublishingwithdale.com slash AAP. Folks, I can't express enough. You already found out James is no BS. He says it's 12. Once when this 12 is filled up, there's gonna be no more slots. Uh, to be clear, James, is this 100% free? No, this is not 100% free. <laughs> this okay. is 0% free. <laughs> right, right. Uh, no, this is this program is, this is a $5,000 program. Okay. There is a level that gets even more attention from me that is an $8,000 program. Okay. And you can read all the details uh, at the link that Dale put in there. By the way, AAP, that stands for Apprentice Author Program, which is the name of the program. I forgot to say that earlier. But uh, no, this is a significant investment in a business asset that will enable you to make back not only that investment, but a lot more over the next several years of running your business. So well put, man. You know, uh, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, see the higher ticket and they understand that, first of all, A, folks, he charges way more on a 
single one-on-one -on -one coaching session. This is where I said that he was insane to drop it all the way down and at about a grand per month, I think this is exemplary, especially since you're gonna be working with 12 people. Hope you're ready to get busy, man. So again, folks, you can head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash AAP and get all the information, the goods that you need to. James, is there any last minute thoughts that you would like to share with our audience? Uh Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for sharing some comments and asking some questions. Uh, I will say that uh, if you would like an opportunity to speak with me personally, uh, especially around the, the Apprentice Author Program, the way that that is set up is you will fill out an application and that application will get you a phone call with me. So if you have questions about that program, if you have questions about working with me, if you have questions about anything really, you can use that and I will get on the phone with you and we will, you know, I'll be able to answer your questions and help you figure out, you know, what is the best path going forward. Awesome. Very good, James. I can't thank you enough for uh, springing this up on me. You're like, let's get together for Facebook. And I was like, yeah, yeah that's right. I said we'd go ahead and get into the groups yeah. now, didn't oh, I? Oh, and, and, and now that I, before I forget this, the other thing about the program is that there are some fun guest experts who are going to give some extra trainings and one of them is Dale, which is me. Why we're in the first place. <laughs> And I was like, I should probably mention that before we leave. No, Dale is, he's going to do a training call probably near, closer to the end of the program where he is going to talk about a lot of things he talked about on here, like how to use Amazon with integrity when you have a business book that honestly, selling it is less important than giving it away to the right client. So, so true. That's going to be, that's going to be really, really fun additional training, bonus guest training that Dale's going to give. And I'm really excited for that. So I want to make sure that gets put in there too. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you folks, uh, any, anybody that's watching this that has uh, worked with me in any capacity, uh, whether one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting, understand this, that um, when I go to do this appearance here with James, I will pull out all stops and I will share high ticket information. So what he's just kind of given you is an abbreviation of what I will bring to the table. So you can anticipate so much more my guest appearance as well as how many other guests are going to be a part of this? At the moment, there are five. I'm in conversation with a sixth and I'm going to continue reaching out to others You know, as we go forward. I can say that, um, Let's see. So Rob Cuesta from Bright Flame Books is going to do a training. Okay. And uh, Shan uh, Shannon Hernandez, who knows a lot about author marketing, she's one of the marketing coaches I work with, nice. is going to do something. Uh, Tina Dietz, who's an audiobook genius, she is going to do Tina's training. awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tina's <laughs> someone else that Dale and I both know really well. Yep. Um, and, I, and I'm actually, so I, I am in conversation with Julie Broad about doing something. We haven't figured out exactly mm. what it is yet, but there will probably be something from her, fingers crossed. So we'll... So yeah, there's gonna be some good people in there. Dude, that's cream of the crop right there. Uh, you got a person who was an overall number one bestseller in Amazon. So Julie Brog comes to the table. So you guys won't know. I'm sure Julie, by the way, hi Julie. Julie's in, in both groups. So, all right, well folks, uh, we definitely appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend like a little bit of a late lunch with uh, James and I. Yeah. And if you got questions, concerns, or comments, you're watching this on the replay, uh, drop it on inside the uh, comments and we'll try to get back to you. In the meantime, you can get all the information again at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash AAP. That's the Apprentice Author Program. And uh, James, thank you very much. I appreciate you doing this for me. And folks, deuces.